Hi, this is Phil Jefferson of Sustainable Today. I'm here with Dave Dahl of Dave's Killer Bread. Hi, Dave. Hey, how are you doing? Go back to the beginning of you know your story. You know, you're born into a, a baking family. Um, you have a, a history, you know, of dealing with the prison system. You know, and then through it all, you you know you came out on top. Yeah, growing up, basically, I was a uh, super depressed kid. I, I really had a problem. Uh, I guess you would say I was clinically depressed, but I just thought life sucked because life was depressing, basically. And um, part of that was, was the, the family business thing that I grew up in and not really feeling like baking was cool. I got to a certain point where I started you know, cocaine and the real drug that really I liked a lot was meth. Um, they called it crank then. I tried that stuff and immediately I wasn't depressed anymore. So I went out and started doing burglaries, uh, armed robberies. I mean, I, I did, there, my conscience went out the window with my depression. I went to prison four times for uh, varying charges, all drug related, uh, a total of 15 years. Every other time that I got out of prison, I, I kind of just wanted to get higher up on the criminal ladder. I, I wasn't trying to be uh, a baker. This particular time, about halfway through my sentence, I started taking some some uh, some meds for depression. I also got a chance to uh, study computer-aided drafting. It was my, my first introduction to my to my mind and what it was capable of doing. And uh, so I, I, from that point on, I started feeling like everything was cool, you know, and I, I couldn't have a bad day because no matter what happened, I was on my way. I was I was happy. You know, I wasn't. I didn't really feel like I was in prison anymore. No matter what happened, there was some bad things that happened, but I was always. I was upbeat. Before I got out, I intended to just be a drafter. I really wanted to, I loved it so much. Somehow, somewhere along the line, I, I, I just started maybe having dreams or something that maybe uh, I wanted to be back in the bakery. Some of them were nightmares, but uh, they were mostly dreams. About a year or so before I got out, I contacted my brother, uh, talked to him about it, told him, hey, you know what? I could take these same principles that I've learned in drafting and apply them to the family business. When I got out of prison, I started testing, uh, fixing the cookies that we were, we were making. At that time, I uh, had trans fats in them. We took the trans fats out and uh, I made them vegan. I took all the eggs out, no animal products in them. And, uh, and that, was, that was when I, I kind of decided that I wanted to make my breads vegan also. I mean, I, I realized there wasn't any need for, for animal products in, in these breads. So uh, I'm not vegan myself, by the way, but uh, that, I do like the idea. So I, I started off with the idea of Blues Bread, uh, named it Blues Bread before I created it. I created it around the name, and I just made the best loaf of bread I could possibly think of making, uh, and coated it with blue, blue cornmeal. And it was, when I came out of the oven the first time, I go, that's Blues Bread, that's a beautiful thing. And then it, I tasted it, and it was, it was on at that point. Um, I knew some, I knew I had some, and I named it. I, I created it around the name blues, uh, blues, you know, the blues music. But I added blue cornmeal to it to give it that blue tint, and I, I think it's a beautiful loaf of bread. Just making things happen in the bakery, make you know, going from the ground up on that, kept me pretty much busy. I mean, working, I was working like 100 hours a week for the first two or three years, and. Uh, and I loved it, but I was killing myself too at the same time. Talk about sustainability, it wasn't sustainable. Three years ago, um, we were making 100 loaves a week of Dave's Killer Bread. That was my thing, was Dave's Killer Bread. In order to be more efficient, we've, we've made all these breads uh, combined with uh, the Nature Bake Organic Breads. Now we, I mean, I don't even know how many loaves of bread, 50,000 loaves of bread a week. Give me your impression of the, um, the prison system in America, you, know, you saw it over a 10 or 15 year period, you know, what you think is fundamentally wrong with it, and then how you had to change your attitude to compensate for that. There's a lot of negativity in prison. Um, it's, it's reinforced negativity. You know, there's a lot of punishment. When I was there, for most of the time that I was there, there wasn't really a culture of um, getting these guys turned around. It's almost as if they don't believe there's any hope for you. What they would do is tend to take more and more stuff, programs that were possible that might work, and they take them away. The CAD CAM opportunity that I got is no longer there. That bothers me because that changed my life. For a guy to change his life, he's got to have a reason. He's got to have something else to, to, to take the place of the happiness and pleasure he got from the other life. The rewards he was getting before, even though prison was the uh, eventual outcome, 
he still had to deal with his, his mentality that he was going to get out and rise up and be all this when he got out. That's what you want to give people a chance to do is, is, uh, is change the world a little bit with, with good things. When you're contributing to something, you know, you're creating like I am, constantly creating, you're seeing people's faces light up when they taste your bread. The pri prison system needs programs to uh, help guys learn something cool. I don't, I'm, I'm sure just about, probably 90% of those guys in there, when they get out, if they had an opportunity to, to contribute to society and make money at it, um, I think most of them would do it and they'd be happy to do it. A lot of us don't know what we're worth. A lot of us don't know, you know, uh, the meaning of life, you, if, if, you mean, if you get what I'm saying. A lot of us yeah. don't understand our role. You know, like for, for instance, for me, um, I thought my role would, would be uh, selling drugs all my life because of the environment I was in. That was, that's what I was used to. And I, I really believe the only way that I got out of that was when I went to the penitentiary, you know? And so it was like a 360 turn for me. Obviously there's some programs available now. Some of those programs are very positive. Can you, you know, outline what some of these programs are? There's Thinking for a Change, there's Pathfinders. And all of these are just cognitive, cognitive classes to change the way that you think, to change the thinking process before you commit a crime. Um, and for the most part, it, it, it helps, you know? Um, I think that as far as the Department of Corrections can do, I think that they can add more of the cognitive programs to help more individuals. Um, I believe that if a person is, has a drug history, a drug charge, I believe that penitentiary trying won't help them. I believe that some type of treatment would help them. And um, as far as myself, I never was into the, uh, you know, the drug crimes high up on a drug list. I was always into carrying guns, you know, that was my thing. So I was kind of like one of the dangerous guys out there. Let's say I put you in charge of rehabilitation programs. What kind of program would you structure? What would you offer to them? Hmm. It would have to be a self-respect, a program that would have a person be more aware of their self-worth. I think one of the biggest things for me in prison that, that helped me out was, was the fact that uh, um, when I got a job, I excelled at it. Um, I was able to sustain uh, uh, probably the best jobs in every institution that I was in. So, so that told me a lot about myself. It helped me to uh, realize that, uh, that I, could, I could be productive in whatever I tried to do. And, and uh, when I got out, um, Dave was good enough to give me a job here at uh, Dave's Killer Bread. How many employees do you have right now? We have 84. Of those, um, about how many are, are former convicts? You talk about convicts, actual people who've done prison time, um, we're only talking one, two. We have a lot of people who have done who are disadvantaged in smaller ways from uh, jail time, uh, uh, you know, and, and not and not having having other screw ups in their past. Actually, I have three. I might have four people now. I don't discriminate based on whether they've been in prison or not. If I get an opportunity to help somebody that's been in prison, I'm I'm down with that totally because not too many people are are willing to do that, and I want to have a mix of people. And I, I don't want to discriminate against anyone. And I definitely don't, I want to give people in prison a chance because I want to give other employers basically something to look at and say, hey, you know, these guys can do it. What's your experience of, you know, having a boss that's, that's gone through the prison system himself? For one, he's came from a place that I've come from. So he's been down that road. Um, we've both had a rough history and we're both on a road to, you know, success. We're both trying to look forward instead of looking back. The work environment here is pretty comfortable, man. It's pretty laid back. Um, we're all about the same age, group of young guys. Um, and, uh, and basically, we all come from hard backgrounds, man. So far, the best experience of my life. Like I said, first job I've had. Uh, I've been here for a year, and I don't plan on going anywhere. I'm totally impressed by what he's created here in the, in the four years he's been out of prison. Yeah. It's just amazing to, to walk in here and work for him and see what he's done. Everybody knows that there's, there's ex-cons working here, you know, if that's what you mean. It's not a problem. Yeah, it's not a problem. I, they, they'd have to get over it if they didn't like it. These are guys that just work hard. They're, they're more concerned, they're more concerned with being, seeing other guys pull their weight. You know, if a guy comes in here with the wrong attitude and doesn't want to do his work, then that's what they don't like. The thing that really motivated me the most was to see somebody who had been a prisoner, who had gotten out, 
who had changed his life around and then came back in. We had some guys that did that in the 20 years that I was in because you have to be out of prison 10 years before you can come back into the prison system. And I, and I seen a couple, three guys that did that. If they gave me the opportunity to go in there, I would be into the prison system. I would uh, love to go in and show a video, say, of uh, what I've done. I want to show people just how bad it was for me at one time and turn it around and turn it into a positive thing. You know, basically, I've taken something very negative and turned it and, and used it to my advantage. Uh, everybody knows my story. The story, the story is a good thing. So people, they go, okay, the story carries the, the product. Um, I want to be able to tell, I want to be able to change people's lives by going in and talking to them. I think it's really important that we tell, that, that people need to know that there are alternatives to, uh, you know, if, if people can get better, that anybody can get better. I, I don't care what your crime is. I think that just about anybody, you know, can turn their life around. If we just stop giving up on people and start giving them opportunities to change, I think they'll do it. Dave, we really appreciate the tour and the unique insights you've given us into your experience in the penal system. We've really learned a lot and uh, really appreciate your unique insights into this topic. My pleasure. This is Phil Jefferson bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.